Quick question, what would you say is the most loved vehicle in the Halo franchise? You might immediately jump to the Warthog, the Ghost, or the Banshee. And whilst they are universally known, I think it's the Pelican. Of course, everyone likes different things, but for me, the Pelican is my absolute favorite vehicle. It's the workhorse of the UNSC that drops you in, keeps you supplied, and extracts you from the fight. And it's in every single Halo campaign without fail. So I've set out to honor this iconic dropship in brick form by creating a detailed, fully scaled version of the Pelican and packed it with as many features as possible whilst doing so. Now this thing is big, so we've got a lot to cover. So get comfy and let's dive in. So like all the UNSC vehicles in Halo, Bungie looked at what the military used in the current day and extrapolated that out into the future. So the Pelican fulfills a simple and yet instrumental role, with that being a battle transport. It reminds me of the combat role of the CH-47 Chinook, with it being able to transport troops, but also sling load equipment below it. So if you take that, make it space capable, and then upscale it to something like the size of a C-130 Hercules, and you've got yourself a Pelican. Seriously though, have you seen a comparison between the two? They're literally the same length. It's no wonder it's a struggle to land a pelican anywhere, and it kind of makes you wonder why the NMPD needs one, anyway. So as we all know, there isn't just one version of the pelican in Halo. So before I could start, I did have to choose which one I wanted to make. To make things easier, we can quickly rule out 343's horrible D79 TC pelican. So that leaves us with either the pre-reach or the post-reach version of the D77 pelican. One is the classic, the original but clearly still design constraints to the limited poly count of early hardware. And the other is a beautiful, much more rounded design that is more reminiscent of current day aircraft. Whilst both of these are insanely good looking designs, in the end, I went with the pre-reach D77 Pelican. Partly because I love Halo 3, partly because it's easier to represent in brick form, and partly just flat out that I like the simplified cargo hauler look of the older version a little bit more. Okay, so now that's covered, let's take you on a tour around the mock. So it's no secret that the Pelican is a massive vehicle, which obviously means that this is a big, big build. This isn't the first version of the Pelican that I've made, but it's still a bit of a surprise whenever you just see how big it is in person. There's a whole host of details and features to cover in this behemoth of a vehicle. But let's cover them one by one, starting with the most visible external feature, the engines. As we've all seen in the games, the Pelican features four engine pods that pivot from the fuselage in order to adjust the vehicle's direction and attitude. So we've got these two larger ones that feature wings that are slightly behind the cockpit. And then we've got the other two on the very rear. These are a little smaller and don't feature any wings. And yes, each of these can pivot just like in game. Whilst they are large and quite weighty, each engine can individually pivot, but can still securely hold its place as well which means that you can pose it banking or lifting. These mechanisms aren't that complicated. I've just used a stock ratcheting pivoting mechanism that Meg has been using all along in their Pelicans. The rear engines worked perfectly as is, but the front engines did have to have a little bit extra design work done to redistribute the weight to prevent the excessive leverage from pulling them down. So considering the size of each of these, they pretty much became a build in themselves. And there are a few details that I'm especially happy that I managed to squeeze into these. Like these recessed thrusters at the rear and the underside that are present in every pod and ended up looking really convincing. I'm also especially happy with being able to fit in these gentle tapers using these long sloped sections to really match the in-game model. The detailing on the front of the pod also looks great, and I thought that the rear engine inlets ended up with a really nice three-dimensional pop to them. In general, these builds are designed around aligning angled segments to give them a smooth, clean look. And while not every joint of these ends up perfect, I think it's better than stacking slopes where you get these ugly overlap ridges. As you might expect from such a massive model, each of these is actually quite a significant build in themselves. This isn't really that apparent when assembled, but when you remove them and compare them with other vehicles, you really get a sense of just how large this whole vehicle is. You'd probably expect the Mongoose to be pretty small in comparison, but the rear engine pod is about the same size as a Warthog, and even the massive Scorpion doesn't look that big when you compare it to the front wing. 
Probably one of the coolest functions of the Pelican is for its ability to sling an array of equipment on the back using its rear magnetic clamp. In the games, they'll supply you with items as small as a weapons drop pod all the way up to the mighty Scorpion. Most of the time, you'll just get the Warthog. So obviously, I had to do what I could to add this function into the mock. Firstly, let's cover detail. I really wanted to represent the intricate detailing of the magnetic rack by both using that rust orange color and giving it some depth. This primarily uses a snot design to enable that detailing. Fun fact, this is actually the only segment to have survived between the previous version and this one, but we'll get to that later. The real question is, how does it work? Well, the front section is actually a flat. You can just fold that down and swivel a hook mechanism out so once that's fully engaged, you can then place the flap all the way back and now you have a hook which you can use to sling items from. Regrettably, you can't use a scorpion on it, at least currently, but you could sling some weapon pods on it or, most obviously, a warthog. Yes, a small part of this is Lego. It uses these squishy rubber parts so it doesn't end up fully locking, so it fairly easily splits into two. And then you just lift your warthog up onto it and reassemble the hook piece and there you have it, an underslung warthog. It's far from the perfect mechanism, and it definitely could be more elegant, but it does the job. So, let's move on to the landing gear. I'm sure you recognise the landing gear that the Pelican has, especially with those long rear sections that add to its unique aesthetic. I went into this build with the ambition to create secure enough connections for it to hold its own weight, and I failed. I ended up underestimating just how huge this vehicle really was. So as soon as it came together, I started to realize just how much mass these long thin sections have to hold. So yeah, it did end up being too much. But whilst not strong enough to support the entire weight, they will prevent the weight of the mock from pivoting backwards, which is still a feature in itself. So to achieve this, first you fold out and down the rear primary gear. Next, you can see that there are these folding secondary members hidden beneath them. These fold down and engage into these slots, and now you have your rear gear folded down. So when you look at the front landing gear, these use LEGO shock absorber technique pieces to enable them to easily fold down from just applying pressure with your fingers. I couldn't quite manage to fit in enough space to cover them with undercarriage flaps, just like the in-game model, but I'll cover that when we look at the underside later. So with all that deployed, we can remove this rear stand and the whole build will stand by itself. It could be more secure, but in fairness, it is relatively sturdy and it just makes it look so good, giving you that really nice unimpeded view of the rear of the build. So now that the gear's down, we can now have a look at the rear access ramp. This is definitely another unique feature of the Pelican where it's split into two so there's an upper section that has a protruding window and a lower ramp section. And in this build, it works just like you'd expect it to in the game. First, you fold the upper section, although it doesn't have a lot of play to move up much. And then you can fold down the lower ramp section. Whilst this isn't an in-game feature, this window can be folded up as well to give it enough clearance for figures to stand there. Although it is a snot design, I have included some choice exposed studs both on the ramp and in the troop bay. This is to allow for figures to be placed and posed on these sections. The troop bay is fully detailed as well, but to cover it properly, we first need to do a bit of light disassembly first. So before that, I want to cover the fuselage. This must have been by far the most tough and challenging segment of the build. Not only is this the segment that has to conjoin to all the other features, but it also has a very unique shape that is important to emulate to really get the look of the build just right. The first important part I identified was to build a hexagonal troop bay. Both the interior of the troop bay and the rear underside are not going to look right if the entire design's not built with a hexagonal structure in mind. The second part that this design emphasized is the gentle change of sloping as you go from the front of the vehicle to the rear. As you look at the Pelican from side on, it starts with an almost vertical slope below the canopy, and each segment adjusts the angle slightly bit by bit until you reach the rear section, which is perfectly horizontal. So a fair amount of the design relies on the ability to get the interior structural elements correct, but this is pretty difficult as the proportions that you've built into the structure are only obvious once you've clad and finished the exterior surface. 
I'll show you later what it looks like when you get it wrong when I show you my previous design. Until then though, one particular area I'd like to point out on the fuselage is this rear slope. It was pivotal for this design that it didn't just consist of stacked inverted slopes. So I used a ball joint mechanism along with these L tiles to create clean lines whilst incorporating the unique geometry of the ship. Another design sticking point was the canopy. I came to realize that there isn't a suitable canopy piece that would do the Pelican justice. So instead, I opted to use Mega's unique tube sections to create the frame of the canopy. And I think this turned out great. So as you'd expect for such a large segment, it's bristling with small points of detail, such as all of the inlets at the side, front and top. There's also a bunch of detailing on the front shaping and behind the engines are just to name a few. All right then, to have a look at some of the inside detailing, we're going to have to start lightly deconstructing some of the mock. So as this is such a large vehicle, the upper cladding isn't as much attached as it's just slotted on. If you manage to tilt this thing upside down, then you probably have a little more to worry about than just a few sections coming off. So first, we can take these rear two segments off. It was a unique design challenge to achieve that gentle curved taper, but I think I did a decent job using a bit of asymmetric design. Next, you can unclip the central protruding segment that overhangs the front segment. Then, if you unclip the bars that make up the front canopy and remove these wing pieces on either side, then you can just raise the front top segment away. And now, we've got access to the interior. So now you can see somewhat into a fully scaled Pelican interior. It's pretty fortunate that the in-game Pelican has reasonably large structural elements so that the interior can be accurately scaled. First, I'm going to start with the door. This build features a fully functional sliding door between the cockpit area and the troop bay area. I can't say that this is exactly the smoothest mechanism, and it does get caught regularly, but it is functional, which is nice. If we open this up, we can get more light into the rear bay. It's hard to get a good look in there, but yep, there's a fully functional rear Pelican troop bay with seats for 10 figures. I even managed to fit in these black divider sections, although most are held in by slotting them between studs, so these are a little fragile and really hard to get into place. For the floor, I went with mostly studless with a snot design, with a few choice stud points for figures and some attachment points for some potential future modular alterations. To prove that this is full scale, I can get the scaled mongoose and place it in here, just like in Halo 3. I think that the hexagonal structure of the troop bay really sells the overall feel of the build. You may have noticed that the end wall section is still a little unfinished. I have placed some studs in there for some tiles and detailing to fit, but never quite finished it. I also want a little detail on the upper bay section in the future and to add some piping, just like in the model. If you move to the other side of the sliding door, you'll find a fully detailed cockpit in the Halo 3 or the D77 TCI configuration. As you'd expect, you can place pilots in both the seats, although it does help to slightly deconstruct the consoles to get them in there sometimes. There's also space for you to fit a pedestal, so you can place your favourite AI to accompany your pilots, although I forgot to include this in the filming. Towards the rear of the cockpit, there's a number of consoles and terminals throughout the front section to match the in-game model as closely as possible. There's one that's underneath the rear pilot seat, and there's one on either wall as well. That covers the majority of the build. But before you click off, there's more. See, there's these two yellow pins. Well, guess what they're for? Before I can tell you though, we need to have a look at the older design. As always, this isn't my first foray into a full-sized pelican, but to fully appreciate this one, it helps to look at where it came from. And this is it. Yep, it's not terrible, but it is far from great. Importantly though, this version taught me a massive amount about how I could improve the next version. So you might be able to tell, but this version was never actually finished. My original design philosophy was built around the idea that you could remove the troop bay, so you could just slot it in or remove it, depending on whether you needed more access or not. In the end though, the hexagonal shape just ended up being too complex to fit, so I ended up just completely scrapping the idea in the next version. I also learned a lot about the proportions and detailing. Both the front cockpit and the rear tail ended up being too chunky, usually throwing the look off. And I ended up overpronouncing the Z dimension, meaning that the entire model was just a bit too tall. To combat this, I ended up scaling and printing out a underside cross section, 
so that in the future all of the features of this mock would be proportional. Speaking of which, this model comes out to 84 by 60 by 25 centimeters, which is fully within the bounds of the set 1 to 38 scale. Okay, so if we head back to the design, those pins are the only major structural component keeping two sections of this build together. Let me explain. If we keep disassembling the Pelican, we've taken the top cladding off. So now let's remove the engine pods. As I do this, you should be able to see a bit more detailing that is usually hidden underneath these. I'm especially proud of this rear taper and these rounded black sections that hold the rear engine pods. So if we continue, we remove these front engine inlets here that are held in with a couple of pins. Once these are removed, we can now finally remove these two yellow pins and just slide the entire top section back. Once you slide it so far back, you can now just lift it and there you have it. The Pelican has been split into two. This makes it far more convenient when you're working on it or for storage. You can probably see a bit more of the construction methods used and I can more easily show you the underside. No good mock is complete without a detailed underside and this build is no exception. The belly of the Pelican actually has a relatively complex underside with it undulating a fair bit from the front to the back. This part took a fair amount of effort to properly represent but I think it ended up all right. Regrettably, the front landing gear just ended up being too bulky to be able to fully fold it away. Although I do think that the current solution is mostly workable. This area has been slightly neglected though and it could do with just a bit more finishing. The actual gear mechanism was inspired by a LEGO mock maker whose page I'll link down below in the description. If we move to the rear underside, you'll be able to see a lot more detailing that's usually covered in shadow. I'll gloss over the magnetic clamp as we've already covered that earlier. If we move further back, there's an extra bit of detailing at the very rear of the craft with a hole present so you can engage the clear stand into the ball joint to suspend the rear of the craft. So this is what allows for the hovering configuration to be displayed. Mega have done a pretty decent job with Pelicans in the past, but I'm not going to compare this with Mega's other sets as one, this isn't really comparable with playscale type sets. And two, as you can probably see from the length down below, this video is getting long. I am tempted to do a side by side comparison to Mega's latest Pelican inbound set though. So if that's something you're interested in, then leave me a like and comment down below. It's always been a dream of mine to build a Pelican to this scale and level of detail, but I'm not finished yet. There are still a few areas that are rough around the edges or could do with a little improvement, such as the interior section of the troop bay. Furthermore, where I can, I really want to add a bunch of unnecessary detailing, such as piping and internal components into areas that are just currently empty. Secondly, there's a whole remit for modular additions to this Pelican. Depending on the version, you can add chin turrets, a rear bay turret, rocket pods, or underslung armament on the wings. I could even go as far as adding the extended troop bay as another modification, so there's a whole lot more that could be done with this build. Mega's quality has been great for about 10 years or so at this point, but I still see people who are skeptical about them all the time. For them to truly capture the serious adult market, I think that they really need a killer set that people will overlook the brand simply because of how insane the set is. A lot like how the UCS Millennium Falcon was to a lot of people. So if there were to be a set like this, I think that would truly convince a ton of people just to dive into Halo set building in general. Throw in a warthog and a bunch of figures and who could say no, right? Halo's what truly got me into Mega in the first place, so I think it would really help if Mega gave people a truly compelling reason why someone would buy a Mega set over, say, a Lego set. With that said though, a set like this would be incredibly expensive, so who even knows if this is possible? I started the first build of this in 2021, and finally, years later, it's mostly done. I would seriously love to do other huge mocks like this in the future, but time and financial constraints do obviously apply. So if you appreciated this build or video, then a like, comment or a sub would be amazing. Who knows, maybe with some help, I can get something else done like an albatross or a phantom in less than two years time. In the meantime though, I have a bunch of other mocks all scaled to this one on my channel. So check them out if you're interested.
Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. I'm Reforger, and I'll see you next time.